big catch is a sculpture that has resulted from a photograph taken in 1909 in Bellingham by Ashley Curtis. This is all done in stages, and the ending will be the six and a half foot silicon bronze patinaed sculpture at the museum, the History Museum in Gig Harbor. As I'm smoothing this out, I'm trying to remember how the salmon's head feels. And I know that the salmon's nose is hard and very smooth and shiny. And in fact, in this particular sculpture, I'm going to put a little plaque on the ground in bronze that says, rub the fisherman's nose for good luck fishing. So I think everyone likes that kind of tactile thing. A lot of people, you know, they'd say, don't touch the artwork, don't touch anything, stay away from it three feet. My approach is embrace it, get close to it, touch it, love it, rub it, be, be part of it. And that's exactly what I want to happen with this. So, it's, uh, so what I'm doing now is I'm loving it. I'm trying to feel the spirit of the king salmon uh, through the clay, imagining what it'll be like when it's in bronze. Now the same with the Helly Hansen, you know, the, the rain gear is always slick, but in this case, I left all my fingerprints in it because I really want it to be tactile. I don't want it to be, um, and I don't want it to be like the Fender on a Ford. I want it to be like a Maserati or a Lamborghini or a Ferrari where you really can see that it's a hand-built object and that's what we want out of this guy. That's what I want out of this guy. What we're doing is we're taking it apart in pieces and uh, so that it can be better um, poured and molded and then also cutting it in certain areas so when it's welded back together in the bronze, those areas will be easy to identify and, uh, and weld. And you can see how the piece is built around a foam interior. You can take the clay, for instance, and push it into the foam and it will hold a dimple or a form that you're trying to get into the clay that you want into the bronze. So it's a tremendous material to work with. So I'm only going to go to the halfway point. Some of it's going to run past that, but uh, we're going to stop at halfway and that'll give me a chance to put the dividers in there for where I want to break the piece up. So you can see as this rubber starts to lay out, it'll smooth out and most of the bubbles will rise at the surface. I may have to work a couple of them loose just with the brush, but um, it should end up with a pretty bubble-free surface when we're done. Yeah, it'll run into every little groove into the in the gills. So for this layer, that's about as far as we're gonna go. We're gonna go back and just double check, make sure some of these little air bubbles that are starting to rise at the surface, make sure that these all pop. So these lines that I'm creating right now with the silicone are gonna be where the piece is divided. So we'll be casting the salmon into, in three parts. So these sections right here will be the division lines and the lines for this going horizontal right now will be the, to join the halves together. Uh, so the next step is to add the shims. These halves, like this side of the tail and the back side of the tail will be joined together when the wax is poured. Uh, right now what I'm doing is dividing where the sections that don't have to go together and so you can use any kind of flat uh, shim stock. I just use playing cards that the casino gives away.
Today we're going to be dividing up the man. We're going to start off by running a box cutter, which will actually establish the lines that we're going to be dividing up the mold. Uh, the next step, which we're about to do, is to go in and put cards and bubble shim along those parting lines, which will help separate the pieces and also match them up in case they have to be joined together. So we're just starting to establish all of these different pieces. So this, this front half of the sculpture will be a piece that'll join to the back. And that's why we include these little bubble shims so that those pieces can be pinned together. Some of these extra uh, collar pieces, I'm probably going to cut off just to make it simpler for the mold to come off. Uh, we'll be mixing up a print coat of rubber, much like we did on the fish, and starting that process. So painting over the entire surface with a really runny, uh, layer of silicone which will run into all of the little details and capture all of that uh, and then building up from there until we've uh, reached the thickness that we're looking for and then we'll be applying plaster to the whole entire piece. 